Motega, the developer behind upcoming MOBA Gigantic, has announced significant temporary layoffs. This comes after the company let go of 16 staff last December and delayed the game's release to 2016. Motega is trying to find new investors to stabilize production, but things look grim for the project that initially attracted $20 million in investment. It's been questioned how much of an impact YouTube has on game sales, but now we have quantifiable proof that the platform is a large influence on players. In a study by marketing group Neverlay, it was found that 35% of players use YouTube to discover new games, making it more than twice as influential as TV. Orion, Legacy of the Cory Odin, the Cameroonian-made RPG that was successfully kickstarted last year, gave us an April 14 release date in its new narrative trailer. The game will be coming to PC only. Lastly, if you haven't heard, Kanye West is making a video game. Announced alongside the debut of his new album The Life of Pablo, only one will explore his mum's journey in the afterlife. This month, Devil Dagger seemingly popped out of nowhere and surprised us. A low poly strafe heavy FPS straight out of 1993, it is both incredibly fast and brutal. Factorio is a factory building sandbox game that just debuted on Steam, Early Access and The Humble Store. In development for 4 years, this game is super polished and garnered a strong following already. Harvest Moon March, Stardew Valley is a retro agriculture simulator with a focus on community assimilation. Grip, the spiritual successor to Roll Cage abruptly cancelled its Kickstarter last year, but it's now back up on its wheels and raring to go in early access. Take whatever action you must to win the presidential election in this satire that is disturbingly too close to the truth. This quiet house, between bookshelves and rows of paintings, lives an artist. Layers of Fear use its setting, a haunted house to make its players think they're in a familiar place. It then twists the trope unexpectedly by having the arrangement of the rooms and house constantly change. A door that once led to the hall may now put you in a broom closet. It's a clever trick and combined with some well-placed jump scares will give the player some good frights. However, once you get a handle on this, the game fails to deliver anything new, making for a second half bereft of suspense and intrigue. The unstable level design is still a terrific idea, we just wish it got played with more. We should also give a shout out to whoever did the sound design, the game's ambience was phenomenal. The Flame in the Flood is like Groundhog Day down a river. The harshest of its apocalyptic world will ensure you die a lot, but you'll always get another chance to go further than the last time. For explanation's sake, you can divide the game into two sections, one on land and one on water. On land, you scavenge for items to upgrade your raft, seek shelter and rest, and try to avoid hungry wild animals. On water, it's a more rapid affair. Headed downstream, you need to dodge the rocks of the river and survive whatever weather the sky throws down. What sews all these mechanics together and makes them feel complete is the game's atmosphere that's pieced together by the lighting, busted up buildings and Chuck Reagan soundtrack. It makes for a real heartfelt and enthralling experience that we have no hesitation in recommending. With its impossibly cute protagonist Yanni, Unravel was always going to be charming. So for us, the biggest question was if its platforming would also be a winner. The short answer is no. It has some neat tricks, like using Yanni's wool as a lasso or trampoline, but overall the gameplay is threadbare, and won't pull you through the 4-6 to six hour adventure. But that's okay, Unravel isn't a game about challenges or puzzles. It's a more rounded experience, interested in tugging at your heartstrings and giving time for reflection. The story of family told through memories, the diverse and beautiful scenes, the orchestral pieces that heighten the mood, and Yanni's ability to convey emotion all culminates in a moving and unique experience. Unravel goes beyond puzzles and platforms and finds something more poignant.
time moves only when you do. There was a point when we feared this idea that Drive Super Hot may be gimmick and little else. However, it only took two minutes of the beta to show us how wrong those fears were. Super Hot certainly has a never before seen idea, but what's even more remarkable is how it just gifts it to the player. There are a few instructions at the start and when you die repeatedly, but they're minimal. For the most part, Super Hot gives itself to you, letting you complete its puzzles with whatever course of action you choose. There are some limits to this, as certain things don't work, but you can win by going left or right, and there's always a chance to recover. You're not boxed into one solution, and it feels organic. The introduction of new toys and mechanics keep things fresh. Also, there's a great minimalist story that makes you question your actions and their consequences. In summation, Superhot gives the player the keys to the lab, and it makes for some fun experimenting. What's in this cave down here? NFS tells people not to go too far in there. It's pretty dangerous. You're in it, aren't you? It doesn't seem that dangerous. Whoa, whoa! Ah, no! Henry! Seriously, it's completely fine in here. <sighs> Damn it. If Firewatch isn't our number one game at the end of the year, we'd be shocked. It's only February and a very early call, but this game is an absolute ripper. For fear of ruining it, we're not going to touch the story. All we'll say is that it has one of the best video game endings, right up there with Transistor, Journey and Portal. Something we can talk about is how developed the game's role playing is. You're isolated in the wilderness, and the only other person you can speak to is your supervisor, who's on the other end of a handheld radio. She's available at all times however, giving you plenty of chances to interact. Whatever location you're at, wherever the story goes, there's an abundance of dialogue choices for you to make, letting you create your character's identity and branch off in your own direction. What makes this all the more compelling is that each piece of dialogue has a voiceover. Sissy Jones and Mad Men's Rich Summer really bring the characters to life and make their relationship feel genuine and alive. In fact, they make the game and its world feel alive. We've never seen voice acting so well executed in a video game. Reflecting on Firewatch, what impressed us most was probably how full it was with new ideas. For instance, you hold down L2 or the left trigger to operate the radio, much like you'd operate a handheld radio IRL. Again, this contributes to the game's authenticity. But amazingly, is that it's using the physical world to interact with its virtual world. Firewatch is full of this type of innovation, and as we explain with the voice acting, has so much depth and polish. In three words, we love it. Those were our top games for February 2016. As always, thanks for watching. My name's Lawrence. And my name's Josh. We'll see you next time here on Indie Former.